The state of Arizona has committed over $1.5 billion to building our research infrastructure over the last two decades. Buildings, labs, and equipment are essential infrastructure for scientific exploration, but scientists are the ones that bring it to life. In 2000, thanks to the vision of Governor Jane D. Hall, the people of Arizona voted for Education 2000 Initiative, or Prop 301. Its 0.6 cent sales tax includes a tiny fraction to support research within our universities as part of TRIF, the Technology Research Initiative Fund. Thanks to the people of Arizona and those tiny fractions that have added up to over $1 billion in research investments in the past 20 years. The funding supports programs like Keys Internships, student researchers who are employed to work side by side with our world-class scientists and has allowed Arizona to attract world-class talent. One of the researchers that TRIF helped bring home to Arizona is Dr. Joshua LaBear, Executive Director of the Biodesign Institute at Arizona State University and the 2020 Arizona Bioscience Leader of the Year. This is the biggest pandemic in over a century. It is the, certainly the biggest epidemic in our generation's lifetime and in many generations before that as well. And it's serious. When all of this began, and we realized that there, the world was facing, and certainly our community was facing, this pandemic. We realized that it required all these different disciplines to solve the problem. And of course, the Biodesign Institute was created to bring together people from different backgrounds to work together in teams to solve specific problems. And so it occurred to me that if there was ever a biodesign moment, this was it. So I actually grew up here in Arizona. I was born in upstate New York, but I grew up here at all my schooling through high school here. I left uh, Arizona to go to college at UC Berkeley, and then from there did medical school and graduate school at University of California, San Francisco. I did my medical training in Boston at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, where I did internal medicine, and then became a, a board-certified medical oncologist after my training at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. My background in research has always been centered around diagnostics. We also had a large project, a contract that we did with an agency called BARDA, which is part of the Department of Health and Human Services, to identify and develop biomarkers that could detect if a person had been exposed to radiation. We had to be able to test 400,000 people in a single week and we had to be able to develop those markers under conditions that were compatible with getting FDA clearance. And of course, the test that we had developed used a technology called qPCR or quantitative PCR, which is the same technology that is used to detect the COVID-19 virus, SARS-CoV-2. And we could pivot that equipment, that technology, all that knowledge and know-how over to SARS-CoV-2 testing and actually develop a platform here at ASU. There were early reports and publications that indicated that as many as 40% or even 50% of people who are transmitting the virus either were pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic. That meant that there were a lot of people out there who were transferring the virus from person to person who didn't even know that they were sick at the time. And the only way to find those people and to prevent them from spreading it is to do some testing. And at the time that we developed our test, there was very little testing available. I'm very privileged because I'm leading an outstanding group of people, people who are all extremely talented at what they do and who are absolutely 100% committed to the mission that we are after here. That makes my job pretty easy. This is not just research for the sake of research, but this is research and effort for the sake of saving people and helping them stay healthy.